Halloumi is a firm, springy, salty cheese with its roots firmly in Cyprus and Greece. The best halloumi is made from sheep's milk, rich in vitamins and essential nutrients. It's thought to promote longevity. Halloumi keeps for many months if stored unopened in the fridge, and its high melting point makes it brilliantly adaptable, perfect for grilling, barbecuing and frying. I'll be championing this texture lending marvel for my yummy vegetarian lunch dish of halloumi courgette and herb cakes. As a chef, I'm never sniffy about cooking with vegetables because I know that with a bit of care and attention, they can be turned into something absolutely stunning. For my ultimate vegetarian lunch, I've got a couple of fantastic recipes. Lightly fried, my delicious halloumi and courgette cakes squeeze every last bit of flavour out of those vegetables. But first, I'm preparing a simple slow roast tomato and watercress salad. These cherry tomatoes are perfect. If you haven't got cherry tomatoes, vine tomatoes are good, or even just big, normal, plump tomatoes. Lay the tomatoes on the tray. And these go into the oven for about 90 minutes. If you turn the oven down really low, you can leave them in overnight. To be honest, the longer you leave them, the better they taste. Once you've seasoned them with salt, sprinkle over with some sugar. And the salt and sugar combined speeds up the drying process because you want that nice chewy texture. And then you get these little thyme flowers and just pick off the buds. Garlic, sliced. Then just spread that on. Now the tray looks quite full and compact. But 90 minutes in the oven, you'll see everything shrink down, and all the skins blistering, and the flavor intensifies so nicely. Extra virgin olive oil. That gives a nice earthy flavor to the tomatoes. Place your tomatoes into an oven preheated to 150 degrees C and cook long and slow for an hour and a half. Now, halloumi cakes. There's something quite exciting about halloumi cheese. It's a very firm cheese and it fries brilliantly. Fill the carrots. Great. Not too finely, you want that nice texture. Next, courgette. The secret is keeping it all grated the same. Put that into a sieve. A sprinkling of salt will draw out liquid from the vegetables. Then grate the halloumi. Halloumi cheese doesn't look that tasty, but once you've got colour on it in the pan, it's really, really delicious. Now, really important to squeeze out the excess water from the veg, and you'll see all that water that needs to come out of there. If you didn't do this, it will make your little patties non-friable because the whole thing starts to separate. And then mix in with the cheese. Spring onions, chop up the whites and the greens. Now we're going to season that with some delicious fresh mint and fresh coriander. Whenever it's vegetarian, I like to put a combination of herbs in there. Tarragon and parsley, mint and coriander, basil and lemongrass. All delicious on their own, but in tandem, their flavours play off each other. Next, two eggs in. Give that a little mix. Add the eggs to the mixture. And then finally, a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs help dry out any excess moisture. Mix all the ingredients together. Before you start shaping these, Taste the mixture. Mm. It's really important to identify the seasoning now. If you wait until you've cooked them, it'll be too late to adjust the seasoning. Roll them to a large golf ball. Shape them to like a little mini burger. You can spice these up with some chilli in there. If you haven't got fresh chilli, chilli flakes. And it's something that can be done up a day in advance. To get your cakes firm and ready for frying, put them into the fridge uncovered for 25 minutes. Pan on, get that nice and hot. Whilst I'm waiting for that, I'll get the dressing ready. Slice the red chilli, seeds and all, on an angle into shards. Then chop fresh ginger. Season with a sprinkle of sugar and salt. Add some rice wine vinegar. Add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. To finish off, some chopped coriander. Got that sweet, sour, spicy flavour. With my chilli dressing done, I can start frying off my halloumi cakes in a hot oiled pan. we will get that nice, crisp edge. You can already start to smell that sautéed halloumi with the courgettes and carrots. 
Smells delicious. Really important to put a nice amount of colour on them. As my cakes sizzle away, I can finish off my roast tomato salad. One of my favourite leaves has to be watercress. Just cut off stalks. Shallot rings. Watercress and shallot go brilliantly well together. The shallot looks so dainty when you open up these little ringlets. Don't forget to turn your cakes. Now, tomatoes. Whatever you don't use, just jar them and put them in the fridge. Mm. Just drop those slow-cooked, warm tomatoes over the watercress. The sweetness is incredible. Absolutely delicious. A little drizzle of aged balsamic vinegar gives that tartness to the watercress. Watercress is naturally peppery, so it doesn't need any pepper. Just a little touch of salt and then a light sprinkling of extra virgin olive oil. After five minutes on a medium heat, my halloumi cakes are ready. So important to have taken out that water. You can see it doesn't disintegrate. And then just get your dressing. Take a spoon of it and then tilt it to the side because I want the garnish. I don't want the juice. And if that does not turn you on to become a vegetarian for the night, I honestly don't know what will. Delicious. My crispy golden halloumi courgette and herb cakes with a sumptuous roast tomato and watercress salad, all of the flavour with none of the meat. Merguez and Fontina stuffed croissants. OK, big and bold. When I was living in France, I stayed there for three years. Once, twice a week, I treated myself to the most amazing, bold breakfast. And it started off with these beauties here, merguez. Cheap, but incredibly tasty. Start off with a nice hot pan. Merguez in. It's a very spicy sausage. Doesn't need any help, doesn't need any chilli. Just a touch of salt and pepper. You can smell the spice. They're starting to release all that wonderful oil, that flavour in there. Add a couple of cloves, a finely sliced garlic. Spread the garlic across the pan. It instantly changes colour. It takes on this nice, dark, rich, golden colour. Now, take a little bit of the heat out with the parsley. The stalks of soft herbs like parsley and coriander can be used to impart flavour during cooking, but the leaves should always be added just before serving to give maximum colour and fragrance. And then finish that off with my capers. Amazing. Uh, beautiful. Now, take your croissant. They're literally 24 hours old, so they're crispy on the outside. And just slice off the lid. This recipe is a great way to use up any leftover croissants from the day before. I used to cringe when I saw the French cooks throw away croissants. I used to cry, thinking, oh, my God. Have you any idea what you're throwing away in terms of flavour? Whatever you do, do not wipe out that pan. Dunk your croissants, mopping up all that amazing flavour and caramelising the inside for that. Beautiful. And don't forget the lids. And then get your thumbs and go inside the croissant. All I want to do now is just create a little pocket and just manipulate the croissant. Now, this is where it gets exciting. Mix up the capers, the garlic and the sausages. Look at the colour of that wonderful, delicious, flavoured oil. Now, some cheese, but not just any cheese. Fontina cheese is like the number one cheese for grilling. And because it's a very rich cheese, you shave it thinner than you would a white truffle, but it gives a really nice saltiness and a light smoky flavour. A touch of pepper. A bit of salt. Place these big boys on the tray. Literally 30 seconds. On the grill. Here we go. Nice. Crisp. Packed full of flavour. Now top them. And that, for me, it's almost like being back in Paris. Except this time, I don't have to share them with the French. My ultimate big and bold breakfast, merguez and Fontina stuffed croissants, a great way to start the day.
spicy black beans with feta and avocado. First, in a pan, heat olive oil. Add chopped onion and fry until soft. Then finely slice garlic and chili. Add cumin, cinnamon and black beans, then combine. Cook together until deliciously soft. These small beans come dried or in tins and are a great cheap ingredient to make dishes more substantial. To serve, dollop the black bean mixture on crunchy tortillas. Top with cube ripe avocado, chopped fresh coriander and crumbled salty feta cheese. Spicy black beans with feta and avocado, a dish that's filling, frugal and tastes fantastic. My next great veg recipe is leek and greer rosti with fried eggs. In a hot pan, sweat shredded leeks along with a knob of butter and season. Next, great parboiled potatoes and greer, a hard Swiss cheese with a great nutty flavor. Then combine with the softened leeks. In a pan, Heat oil and a little butter. Spoon in the potato, leek and cheese mix. Cook gently until golden and crisp underneath. Then slide onto a plate, flip over and return to the pan to finish cooking. Finally, for the perfect topping, fry two eggs and place them on top of the rosti. Top with fresh tarragon. Leek and Greer Rosti with fried eggs, a simple but substantial dish that makes the most of hearty root veg. What could be more classically British than the cheese that's been produced here since the 12th century? Cheddar. Originally made in the caves of the Cheddar Gorge in the West Country, it's still far and away the UK's cheese of choice. In Britain, cheddar outsells all the other cheeses combined. Good quality cheddar has an amber, yellow hue, and it's firm but not greasy or hard. A dish becomes a classic because it's delicious and somehow strikes a chord with us. It just works. Sometimes these dishes can become tired, but a clever twist helps make them fresh again. You can't get more classic than a centuries-old midday meal of bread, cheese and beer. Reinvented and marketed by pubs as a plowman's lunch in the 60s, I'm now giving it my 21st century take. Right, plowman's with the most amazing but super simple beer-baked bread, hearty and full of flavour. For a really quick and easy bread dough, sieve a mix of wholemeal and self-raising white flour with a good pinch of salt. Salt is really important in the bread. It's the first thing I do once I've cracked it and smelt. You want to smell that salt baked throughout. Beer in, about 250 mils of beer. And the reason why this recipe works so well is that the beer has got that yeast. So naturally, it's going to work beautifully. Give that a really good mix. I'm looking for the mixture to be quite wet. If the dough becomes too firm, then it's going to cook dry in the centre. Just as it starts to fall through the whisk, that is perfect. Beautiful. This mix will work really well as one large loaf, but I want to make my ploughman's a little bit more special. Small tins give it that kind of intimacy, and I quite like having my own little loaf. Give the moulds a really nice lining with butter. Make sure you butter the top. Now, tablespoon of flour. Dust inside the mould. That will stop your mixture sticking. Tap out any excess. Three quarters fill your little moulds. We're going to allow it to sort of rise just so it comes above the mould and forms this really nice miniature loaf. Onto the tray, centimetre apart. Into the oven, 25 to 30 minutes at 180. Something quite nice about the smell of home-baked bread in the kitchen. Delicious. No plowman's is complete without pickled onions. Red onion is a lot sweeter, less harsh than a white onion. The early days of plowman's, you've got those ghastly, sharp pickled onions that make you almost cry when you're crunching them. I'm going to lightly pickle my red onion. Just push your fingers through so you get these nice sort of onion rings. A little touch of salt, a little sprinkle of sugar, and then a couple of cloves in there. 
that gives it a really nice sort of perfume and sort of makes the pickling slightly more mellow. Red wine vinegar. Now, if you haven't got red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, it's just as good, but red matches the red onion, so it goes hand in glove. A couple of tablespoons of vinegar. Just give that a really good mix. To speed up the pickling process, use a weight to put pressure on the onions. As the weight presses down on the onions, the clove, the salt, the sugar, the vinegar work their magic. And it comes up with a really nice, light, fragrant pickle. For my 21st century ploughmans, I'm creating an all-in-one salad and bringing the traditional elements together with a punchy dressing. A tablespoon of English mustard, a tablespoon of honey, a touch of salt and pepper, and finish off with white wine vinegar and olive oil. Now, generally, it's sort of three parts oil to one part vinegar. That's the sort of general base. Mm. You don't really think of a vinaigrette with a ploughman's, but this is a really nice sort of modern approach to a ploughman's. For my ploughman's salad, I'm using a mixture of robust and crunchy romaine lettuce and punchy watercress. If I was Making a watercress soup, I'd use the stalks. But the stalks are a little bit bitter, so I just grab them like that, pinch them, and then twist. Mm. Very peppery, very hot, but so juicy. Watercress in, your celery, chop it nice and finely. It's the one thing that everybody leaves is that stick of celery, so scatter it amongst the salad. A bit of oomph and color from some sliced radishes, and sweetness from a thinly sliced apple. Whilst you're busy throwing your ploughman's salad together, do not forget about your beer bread. Before it comes out, I'm going to glaze the top with a little touch of milk. That will put a really nice finish to the bread. Back in for the last five minutes. Now for the magic in the ploughman's. Generally, you'll see it as a ham or cheddar or Stilton ploughman's. It's hard to dictate which one's the best. So, for the ultimate ploughman's, I'm adding all three. With your cheddar. Peel. Some nice shards of that delicious, creamy cheddar. Just get them dancing on top. The dressing, drizzle round in circles. And then finally, our delicious, lightly pickled onions. Give them a good squeeze. And look, just dot the onions around. Bread is ready. It's got that nice, Yeasty smell, warm, crusty, and delicious. And there you go. That is my classic modern version of a traditional stunning ploughman's. Wow. My delicious all in one ploughman's salad with individual beer bread loaves updated for the 21st century.